Okay. Today I'm going to tackle the question, the subject that some of you have uh, sent me messages about is the is the concept of uh, of cadences in uh, in music and uh, I posted a, a video a video about not a, not exactly about the subject but I posted I posted a video a video preparing you for uh, for this video that I'm gonna do now that I'm doing now because uh, in order to understand to understand the concept of cadences in music they are they they are, there are some pre prerequisites that uh, that are uh, that are, that are, that you must know. Okay, um, first of all, what is, what is a cadence in music? What is it? Well, maybe different people have different def definitions about, uh, Cadences, but uh, the way I look, the way I, I I define cadence in music is is a chord progression that brings sounds to a musical close through harmony and that chord progression which is a cadence the cadence i'm talking about can can close can bring closure to a simple phrase musical phrase a musical a musical section or an entire composition but the main thing that the cadence the cadence brings brings a, a close to a music to musical sounds okay um, it could just just like I just said to you 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 can and just a musical phrase with a cadence you can end the section of a song with a cadence or the whole the entire song of music with a with a cadence the main thing is that the cadence brings the music brings the music to a close, okay, ends the music. Now, there are, if you have not watched my pre previous video uh, about this, this subject, I am advising you to do so because I don't think I'm going to go back to what I to what I have already covered on the on the on the subject. Uh, if you pre some well, if you prerequisites to understand the to understand the cadences. The first one, uh, you must understand the the concept of diatonic system in the 
in the major scales. Uh, when you hear the word diatonic, diatonic in music, don't be intimidated by 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 it. It is uh, it is very simple. This is a word that uh, that originated from uh, from the Greek from the from the Greek language from the well from the Greek word dia, dia, diatonikos which means through tones I don't I may not have the right pronunciation for the Greek word but at least at, the, at least I, at least I tried so diet 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 diatonikos the 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 Greek word from which the word the word diatonic in music originated means through tones but in the western music you know the in the west western diatonic musical system that word means belonging belonging to the scale belonging to a specific scale okay a note if a note is diatonic to a key that that means that note belongs to the to the specific key and if you build a chord on that note the chord also is diatonic to the specific to the specific key now if you bring a note from another key into the, the current major key you're using that note may not be diatonic to your to the to the, to the scale you're using at the moment so that that is very important like uh, in the major scale, in the C major scale, for example, all the no all the seven notes in the C major scale, okay, all those notes belong to the key of C major, to the key of C major, so they are diatonic to the to the to the to the, to the scale to the C major scale. Now, if I bring a sharp into into the mix, a sharp. If I brought a sharp into the mix, a sharp is does not belong to the key of C major. So a sharp a sharp would not be diatonic, diatonic to the C major key. It does not belong to the C major key. So if I build a chord on F sharp, that chord also, you know, would not be, if I build it, it, it would not be diatonic to the key of C, of C major. It doesn't mean that I will never be able to play that chord within the C major con context. The only thing is, it will still be it. It will still be non-diatonic to the key of C major. But I can, I might be, I might be able to use it anyway in the musical context as maybe a passing. Uh, tone or a passing chord which would not last too long okay 
Also, you know, you must understand the concept of a function within the diatonic system in the major scale because each note in the scale has a function. What I mean by function, each note can be either tonic, subdominant, or dominant. Those are the three functions within the diatonic system in the Western music. So the, the function, the first function tonic, the second function subdominant, and the third function dominant. And in order to you know if you want to to know how to determine whether whether a chord or a note is is either subdominant, dominant, or or uh, tonic. Um, I am encouraging you to go watch my previous video about it. Uh, I think uh, the title is uh, "Let's Let's Talk About Tonic." subdominant and, and and dominant that's the title of, of the of the of the of the video i'm talking about youtube video so you can check that out you can check that out so that's the function within within the diatonic system in the major scale each note has a function each chord has a function whether tonic subdominant or dominant okay um, you must also understand the concept of Roman numerals okay on uh, in the major scale there's a there's a number assigned assigned to each note in in the in the major scale okay you got seven notes so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Roman numerals. So, you know, in order to to have, in order to analyze the the uh, the harmonies in uh, in uh, in the major scales. For, for example, the those the numer the Roman numerals, you know, help you uh, to to do so. Uh, so this is why m most of the time you don't uh, in music you don't uh, you don't hear uh, in music. Uh, the um, a lot of musicians don't really use the, the the letter names like B C D E. They use the numbers instead, you know, be, because the numbers can be used. The numbers the numbers can be used on on any major scale. Okay, as opposed to the letters that. That uh, that uh, change with uh, with scales. Okay, so so we know if I uh, in the key of C major, if I tell you to play note no, note number four, you're gonna play F, right? If I if I'm if I tell you to play note number one, you're gonna play C. If I tell you to play note number seven, you're gonna play B. And so on and so on. You got to, you, you, you need to understand the, 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 uh, the, you know, how those numbers 
I use the NY. Also, it's important to understand the concept of seventh type chords, chords built within the diatonic system. Okay, if you if you just play three notes like C C E G, that's a triad. Okay, a D D major, that's a triad. G major, that's a triad. Simple triad. Okay, three notes. One note number one, note number three, and note number five. Give you a major triad, right? Like C major triad. If you lower the third half step, then you get a C minor triad, right? And it, whenever I do an exercise, I use the C major scale as a sample. Now it is your respons your res responsibility to transpose those that exercise to other scales chromatically okay so you can be familiar with the concept in all the uh, the major scales all right so how do you build how do you build the seven seven type chords within the diatonic system such as in the major scale well you build not you you build you build those chords by stacking interval stacking interval of thirds on top of each other okay and those intervals of thirds can be major third or mi minor third it's a combination of major thirds and in minor thirds and most of the time the, the difference is 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 established depending on where the half step is in whatever interval you're trying to uh, do uh, to uh, to play so if I'm building a major Let's say I want to build, I have, I'm playing C major triad, triad, and I want to play C major seventh, all I have to do is play another third, or after, you know, above the G, and I got, I got, I got the B, and that will be a major third over over the G. Okay, I have C E G that give me the triad and then I play in a, I play a major third above the G and I get to B and that give me that give me C major seventh. And that's the way you build you build all the seventh type chords by using by stacking Stacking intervals, major minor intervals, on top of each other. On top of each other, so you can then when you play all the modes within the scale, you do the same thing. Okay. Okay. Those are major seventh type chords within the. Uh, the uh, diatonic system in the major in the major scale, and I'm using of course I'm using C major scale as an example. Uh, when the speak speaking of diatonic diatonic uh, 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 system, like when you whatever you know. Uh, all the notes within the major scale, within the all the seven notes within in the major scale, are diatonic to the major to the C major scale. 
Now, when you play the modes, the modes also are diatonic to the C major scale. Okay? The, the Dogen mode, the Frigian mode, and so on, so on, they also are diatonic to the, to the C major scale. Okay? Because they belong to the C major scale. The C major scale is just the parent, the, the parent scale of all the modes in it. Okay? Alright, so another thing to understand in order to, to better understand cadences is to, is to analyze and understand the the circle of fifth of fourths. I also call it cycle of fifths or uh, cycle of fifths and fourths. You know, the reason why I say cycle of fifths and fourths. It's a, it's, a, it's a circle, just like a clock. It, when you move clockwise, you're moving in an interval in in intervals of fifth. Well, it's a, it's a circle of fifths. And but when you move counterclockwise, you you moving you progressing in intervals of fourth, perfect fourth. So that's why I also call the circle circle of fourths. Okay? Clockwise, perfect fifth progression and cut clockwise perfect fourths progression. Okay. Now uh, What uh, okay? Let's 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 go. Let's talk about cadences. Cadences in music right now. Your topic. The essence of your questions. And you know who you are. The the people who are, who are who have sent me messages about covering this uh, subject cadence uh, I already give you my definition of it now what about type of uh, cadences well type of cadences depend on how those functional chords progress within the major scale which is the diatonic system of the major scale okay let me repeat that the type of cadences you have in music The types, okay. Let me see. the types of cadence of cadences that you have in music depend on the progression of the functional chords, diatonic chords within within the major scale in the diatonic system. System. Remember. We have three functions, three diatonic functions, tonic, subdominant, and dominant. So the way those chords follow or precede each other determine determines what type of 
cadences you're dealing with. Now, in each group, in each, in each functional group, you have different chords because they have the same function. Okay? In the tonic, you have different you, you have different chords that have the same function because they share mostly they share the same notes. In the subdominant area function functional area you also have dif different chords because once again most mm, they mm, they share most of the notes mm, the, most of the notes within within them in the subdominant functional area you also have different chords that share most of the notes okay so in each group in each functional group you actually can substitute the chords okay because they are similar in some ways okay in the tonic function yeah in the tonic function you have three chords the one major seventh the three minor seventh and the six minor seventh as you as you can see i use numbers i use Roman numbers as opposed as opposed to the letter names but just for you I'm going to I'm going to let you know what notes cost what notes correspond to the to the Roman numerals okay functional area and the chords that are tonic that are considered that are considered tonic within the major scale major scale major scales within the diatonic system in western music okay you have three three tonics okay the one major seventh in the case of C major scale which is a C major seventh that's tonic its function is tonic the second one is E is uh, three minus seven in the case of C major that's E minus seven and the third one is six minus seventh in the case of C major it is eight minus seven you and I we are I'm not teaching I'm not teaching it's just like we are we are we doing some sort of w workshop together okay this is not uh, something that I formally prepared but we're doing this together okay so those those three chords those three tonics that I just played 
they can be sub substituted for one another since they share mostly the notes within them. Okay. That's it. That's the tonic. Okay. Now let's move to the subdominant functional area. Okay. What 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 are the chords that are that are considered subdominant in the diatonic diatonic system? Well you have two of them, okay? That's the that's 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 the chord built on the fourth degree of the scale and the one built on the second degree of the degree on the second note of the scale. In the in the case of C major, the note the chord built built on the fourth degree of the scale is F major seven. D D minus seven, which is two minus seven, D minus seven. Okay, four major seven and two minus seven, which is D D minus seven here. Okay, those two chords within the diatonic system, the, the within the, within the major scale, are are considered subdominant. Their, their, their function is subdominant. Okay? Alright. There's two of them. And you can substitute them for one another. Okay? Since they share most of the notes within them. Now, let's go for the third. For the third functional area is, is the dominant okay in the dominant in the dominant it is functional area we have two chords okay that's the the first one is the five dominant seventh Okay, five dominant seven. In the case of C major, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. The number five uh, is gonna be built on the fifth note, which is G. So it's gonna be G dominant seven. All right. That's and the other one. That is considered that, that is considered having a, a dominant function. It, the chord is built on the seventh degree of the scale. In the case of C major scale, it's going to be it's going to be B. All right, B minor seven flat five. B. B minor seventh flat five, which is seven minor seventh flat five. Those are the three functional areas and the chords and the specific chords that belong to each one of them. Okay, I hope you understand that. Now, the way they move. The way they follow and precede and precede each other, that will give you the type of the types of cadences within the system, within the, within the diatonic system. Okay, we're gonna try the first one. Like I, like I just told you, it's it's a workshop. We, um, um, we're gonna try the first one. We're gonna try all of them and we're just working we're working together. I'm not teaching you. We just we're just working together. Get on your 
keyboard, piano, and let's do it together. Okay, it's a workshop. All right, let's go for type. Let's let's go for types of uh, cadences. Let's go with the let's go with the first one. Let's go with authentic cadence, which 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 some people also call call perfect cadences cadence authentic cadence or perfect cadence according to some some people the that that cadence you know the perfect to have a perfect or authentic cadence you must have you must have the dominant you know you must have a dominant chord okay moving to the one chord you must have it a, a dominant chord a dominant chord moving to a one chord okay now you go to a group of dominant functional area what do you see what chords what chords that you have in the dominant functional area you have you have two chords you have the five seventh and the and the seventh minor seven flat five so in the key of c major a perfect or an, an authentic authentic cadence would be five g okay let's go here g i'm gonna play the bass i'm gonna play the root in the bass and I'm going to play, uh, let's see, I'm going to play the third with my left, no, I'm going to play the, the third, which is B with, with my right hand, and I'm going to play oh God, the fifth with, with my right, okay, I'm going to play the bass with my left hand, and the rest of it, the third and the fifth, and I'm going to double the, the root with my right hand. Okay, here you go. Okay, that's the, that's C, no, sorry, that's a G dominant in the key of C major. And if I want to play G dominant seventh, all I need to do lo uh, lower because I have G as my last note so just lower G a major second to F and I got G major seven got it it's a workshop now now a major now to have a major no 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 now to have an 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 authentic or perfect cadence I need to move from from this chord G major 7 to 1 to the 1 chord which is C major 7th okay so we have let me let me rephrase that just in case I just in case I made a mistake so we're going to move from C, from G dominant 7 from G dominant 7th to C major 7th which is C okay we have a perfect cadence or an authentic 
cadence okay that five or five seven to one major seven all right there you go g major g g dominant seven to to the one major seven c Okay, that's your that's your uh, that's your uh, perfect cadence or authentic cadence. But remember, the one chord, the one chord can also be minor. The one major seventh can also be one minor seven. Now, in that case, you can play your 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 progression would be okay, G dominant seventh, and then moving to A minor seventh. Because the, 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 the root, the one chord now, is minor seven. There, there are other, there are other changes when you get, uh, when you get to the, uh, to the um, rules and regulations in, uh, in, in um, regarding extensions. You know, the the dominant seven chord will have will have colors, or the different types of colors uh, added. Uh, you know, uh, added to it. You know, so that's that's another uh, story. Okay, now there's a remember in that group you also have another. Another in the dominant in the function in the dominant functional area, you also have another chord you can use. Okay, uh, which is the seventh, which is the seventh, uh, the seven minus seven five five. Okay. Okay, it's it's a dominant. It's it's a dominant type chord. Okay. Also, because because you have two of them. Okay, that's a the five seven and the seven minus seven. Both seven minus seven flat five. Both of them are dominant type chord. Okay, so you can have a perfect cadence. You can have a perfect cadence by moving from C minus by moving from B minus seven flat five. To the one chord which is C or C major seven. Okay. Um let me try another another uh let me try another uh key. Let's say now well uh, you have uh, you want to you want to you want to play perfect a perfect cadence or an authentic cadence in the key of B flat for example so what is the fifth degree in the key of what 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 is the fifth note in the key of B flat is that's F. So it's going to be F dominant seventh moving to B flat. Okay? F dominant seventh, which is. Let me play the bass here. going 
to resolve that chord on B flat. Okay, that's five seventh. Okay, moving to one. That's your perfect cadence or authentic cadence. All right. So uh, let's 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 try moving from from a dominant seventh chord to to a one minor chord. All right. So let's let's use C minor. For example, so the in the key of C, this the seventh the the dominant seventh chord is G or G. The dominant the dominant chord is G or the dominant seven, which is D, G dominant seven. Okay, so we're going to play G. Okay, and I play the root down here. Let's see a bit. And then we're going to move now, not to not to not to a one major seven. We're gonna we're gonna move to a, to a one minor seven, which is C minor seven or C minor. So this is G G seven or G. No, let me play it like this. Okay, hold on. Now. Let me play it like. Uh, the wood here. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, okay, see G or G dominant seven, and then now I'm going to play. Uh, now I need to play uh, uh, C minor, and it's going to play. It's going to be like this. This is. Uh, uh, e minor, you know, this is an E flat, and this is, this is a C, so this is a G. Okay, I'm gonna play, uh, okay, right there, okay. So let's play G dominant seventh using the root in the bass. And then using the G, we're using the uh, third right here, and then and this is the fifth right here, and then this is the uh, this G, double G, and then this is G octave of course, and this is a uh, and this is a F, make it uh, make it make it make it making it dominant seven. I want to play now. I want to go to C minor. You know what? So I'm going to go. You know what? I do it this way. Okay. I just play the the root position of C minor. Root position instead of first inversion. In this in this case. So that's your. Uh, that is the perfect or authentic cadence. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop because I don't want the video is getting to to be to be very long. So I'm going to stop. So what I do the next time, the next time. I post a video on the subject. I'm going to I'm going to see the the other types of cadences. Now we just we just we just we just covered the uh, perfect cadence. Okay, five moving from five five seven to one major seven of of five five seven to one minor or one minor seventh. 
So next time we will, we will, we go, next time we're going to, we're going to cover half cadence, maybe play goal, play goal cadence also. We'll see. So in the meantime, keep practicing and have a good day.